And welcome to the Goward Ultimate Guide in 2024. Everyone honestly keeps asking me, what's my talent build? How do I use this hero? And guess what? I'm going to spoil it all for you today. Yes, I'm going to give away my secrets on why I win so many duels. And I'm going to give you guys, even in the artifact section, some secret tips and tricks in dueling. And you're going to learn so much all from Goward, the main forest guardian, for the Spring Warden faction in Call of Dragons. And welcome to today's video. Yes, I'm going over Goward, so you know what to do already, guys. If you want more Call of Dragons guides, more information, anything to do with Call of Dragons, you know what to do. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. My name's Mr. Sneak, an official Call of Dragons content creator. And we've been doing this over 500 days plus, right? We've been playing this game, grinding out the content, so you know I'm always up to date and I'm always going to give you something that you can always watch, right? So, Goward is on the table. We're going to go through all of his skills, the pairings, the artifacts, the pets, and then more importantly, talents, all timestamped for you guys. So, you can obviously go through those sections. And we're going to go through the skills first. Skills are going to be nice and quick, nice and easy because there's nothing too crazy about his kit. But I will give you some tips and tricks about it, right? So, Goward, first skill, pretty simple skill. He's going to heal 1200 and reduce the amount of damage he takes by 20% for four seconds. This is a powerhouse. And basically, the thing which makes him super tanky isn't really the healing um, factor. It does help. I'm not going to lie, it's nice. And it's going to be used for one of the strategies later. But the damage taken reduction is insane. This is all damage, guys. You're reducing all of that damage, the normal hits, the counter hits, any critical hits, hero skill damage, you name it, all reduced by 20%. And you can't hate that, right? And this is for four seconds in this kind of like skill. The second skill is all about garrisoning. You're not really going to be using this. If you have him on your city, I would recommend turning him off. Why? Because... The thing is with a Goward Garrison, which some people might keep saying is a good thing, you are going to keep healing, meaning whoever is hitting your, you know, city with that rally, you're healing troops for them, meaning they're getting better trades, meaning your hospital gets filled up, and I just personally don't like it. This guy is mainly used as a tank, and you'll see that in the open field and in, like, behemoth raids. So just remember that. So you can kind of ignore this skill if you want. And more focus on the next two skills because this is where all of the benefits of two Goward relies in. You get a nice passive where all your infantry units get a 20% defense bonus with that 30% increased healing received, which obviously synergizes beautifully with his first skill. And then his fourth skill is whenever um you're healed, it just says whenever you're healed, you have a 75% chance to increase your physical damage dealt and it just goes all up to 30 percent again for five seconds and this is going to be crucial when we go into a talent section later on and i'm going to explain why when we go into there right so nice easy kit to understand right is all about basically healing taking damage and when he heals he can deal additional damage to his enemies right the awakening is kind of powerful i'm not gonna lie when you do awaken the hero you will get a six second reduced damage taken buff for 20 percent, which is great and you will get a nice extra 200 healing but it's the fact that you get a six second reduce of all damage taken by 20 percent. six seconds is insane and you're going to see why it's more insane later on when we go over my specific build for him so that's all the skills over and done with and if you want to go over them you can go over them quickly again and just replay that section so now we're going into the pairs and i'm going to explain obviously two main pairs at the beginning and then obviously different things that you could be trying out with goward as well so the main one that everyone will obviously be knowing is the Eliana and the Goward. This is basically the most free to play, friendly, super tanky build. And is basically the merit printing choice for free to play players. So if you don't have like a really strong Madeline, which is going to be the next suggestion, you will go for this Eliana. And generally anyone with an Eliana and Goward is going to be pretty even in the trades. It might be just down to the tech or the artifact difference. Personally, 
in those duels, right? So you can run this, it's not a problem. It's gonna be a really good choice in the super early game until you get some stronger tank heroes. And one of them is the one I use all the time now. It is gonna be my Goward with my Madeline. People are gonna ask the question, I am gonna make a full video on it afterwards, but what do you run? Madeline primary or Goward primary? And there is a argument for both on either role, depending on what talent trees you want to kind of run on your madeline but i do prefer running goward on the primary slot and you'll understand why when i do a full in-depth video on it but goward and madeline perfect choice you can run him in the primary or deputy slot it honestly does not matter i'll leave that choice up to you but now we're getting into some more interesting decisions because I'm not going to lie, there are two other choices that I would recommend with Goward that I am going to slowly start to experiment a little bit more with in the future. And that is going to be Goward with Skogel. This is going to be like a more off-tank bruiser. And the reason why I'm saying this is because we also have this healing factor in our kit. And by having maybe an awakened Skogel, for example, and an awakened Goward further down the line, you might have the ability to dish out some insane damage. Because you got to think, anytime Skogel triggers, she has an insane buff increase, and it's a 15% HP bonus with this diffused additional counterattack bonus. And Goward's now going to increase the damage of that by 30% whenever he heals himself or obviously she heals the march too so i actually really like this synergized combo and obviously when you awaken her you get that 10 percent extra counter attack damage bonus so nothing to sleep on at all and another one that i'm i'm gonna recommend and i'm only gonna recommend this again later on and in, in down the line when you have similar skills to this where you have a five one by five is in this honestly i'm, I'm super loving this hero for the exact same reasons, you can heal quite nicely with this hero. You can put Infirm onto other marches. You are basically pretty tanky still because you are reducing all of the counter-attack damage um, against other enemies by 50%. It's so powerful, you don't understand how much it is reducing. And then on top of it, you know, if you do awaken her, you get that extra three seconds on the buff on the Infirm plus an extra little bit of healing. So this is more, I would say, a, a choice maybe really down the line if you know there's more infantry heroes in call of dragons as of this you know maybe as you watch this video in the future right because it could be like that where we can use in this with goward and i actually do see this working as like a super healing super tanky support march when with certain obviously um artifacts and obviously pets designed for it right so i really do enjoy it so that's just four basically different pairings you can run there two super meta ones which is obviously madeline goward being the best super tank in the game then it met, uh, the eliana and goward for the merit printer and then obviously two extra ones just as a honorable mention for people that might want to look for some spicy options for their boy so Let's carry on. We're nice and smoothly. We're going to keep moving on and finishing up before we go into the talent section. We've got the artifact and the pets to go over. So I'm going to go over the pet first because I think the pet's nice and simple with this guy. I am honestly going to recommend so many different um, pets because with Goward, you can use quite a lot of them. One pet people might try to use and I, I, I understand it but honestly it doesn't seem that great and it seems to be outperformed everywhere is the strike bear a lot of people like this pet it's a cool pet don't get me wrong but i just don't like the fact that this um increases our vigor effect by such a small percentage personally it's not that nice when you're you know going for that super tank right so there is better options and the better options it, what i am going to recommend if you are using it is straight away going to be a sand lizard this guy is just so much better he actually just promotes the same thing that you want to do which is healing so you can do two different builds you can play a more supportive role where you just run stone aura with this tranquility and you basically wouldn't have this self heal you would have instead a um uh, the divine healing so you double up on the amount of healing gained so you would run basically a super healing on on your pet 
Um, if you didn't want to go for a super healing a AOE build, what you can do is basically run the exact same stuff, but instead you just add on the self-healing. And what this does is it increases the healing even further, but it's a lot more selfish. It puts it onto you. And then you can imagine the other skills that you would want on this pet is stuff like Counter-Strike and the Wild Counter-Strike and Tough Counter-Strike and even a singular Chain Strike because any of those effects can basically trigger either an additional Counter-Strike or Normal Attack triggering certain talents and things to go off basically so it's a really nice super healing build easy to work off if you want to go more damage oriented there's obviously the two pets that i would always recommend venomous lizard for more super range and more consistent damage but if you feel super aggro the broom bear might be one for you i know some people might think this is only for goresh but you'd be surprised on how much counterattacks you can actually launch. It's obviously a maximum of three, depending on what you run. It goes all the way up to, um, I think it's five stacks. Um, but that's that's hard to hit, right? So you can run this if you think you want to. But I would personally, and this is what I normally run, as you can see, my Venomous Lizard. I just love this thing on him. You heal a ton. You just deal a ton of free damage on the outburst, right? So nice and simple. My recommendations are these two lizards. You can't go wrong with either of them. So now we're going to the artifacts. And the artifacts, again, is a really easy kind of choices for your infantry march. And I'm going to explain now, like I kind of suggested in the earlier part of the video, some secret tips and tricks about this march. So a lot of the time, what I would always recommend if you are in open field, meaning PvP, and you're fighting and frontlining for your alliance, you always bring a dragon scale armor and obviously the highest one, meaning your highest level. So mine's level four, so I use this more often. But if you've got a higher level, for example, Greymar's Warhammer, you could also bring this. These are my main two artifacts that I would always recommend bringing on uh, my Goward in the open field. The reason why is you honestly just want to take as much damage as you can for your team. And more importantly, if you bring Greymars, you can actually CC down your opponents. You can stun lock maybe the enemy T5. And even if it's a two second, you know, stun, that's two seconds. They're not dealing damage, not doing anything. And basically you get some free extra, you know, maybe tempo in the fight. You can also obviously do the same with the Dragon Scale Armor. Just remember you get some really powerful ranged resistance. That's kind of why I prefer this it just makes you super super tanky when you're going in for your front line reducing obviously the amount of uh, range damage you take by 15 percent which is great um you can also which i am going to suggest if you do get it and this is only if you don't have one of these legendary artifacts but you honestly want to be a useful player and you actually want to be useful as a frontline player against the t5 what i would recommend is the actual new dagger of betrayal i think this is a all-star in this because yeah you get some attack and we get march speed march speed super important for infantry but what your job is as you can imagine is just to keep dispelling every eight seconds dispel your enemies t5s you know they might have increased their damage taken reduction buff for their goresh take that off you know they might have increased their damage output take that off you know what i'm saying like you can do so much work and actually give a really powerful advantage to your opponent uh, to your to your alliance against your opponents right so definitely would recommend this so if you're not doing any of those um tasks which is open field fighting and you are going to be doing the old oh we're in the ring section if you are going to do any of the old merit farming Obviously, I would always recommend slapping on your best artifact that you have just to obviously take the most amount of damage reduction dealt. However, there is a very top, top secret that a lot of people don't realize. But in those duels, if you do have a level five maxed out Dragon Rift and you equip it onto your match, I will promise you, you will win your duels. I am... A 42 million player, I have got reports of dueling 60 plus million players with their infantry. They have more defense, HP, and all the other stats, but my attack is like 150% more. It's insane. 
they actually just win. I flat out just beat them through the just damage dealt in the merit trades. It's kind of like a little secret cheese. If you want to kind of always win, you can do this. But if you want to be a little bit more fairer, just slap on one of those ones that I've suggested earlier. And then the one artifact that you can imagine I haven't no, um, talked about and it's a staple for this match is Harlequin's Mask. You're going to need this. I don't care who you are. If you are going to be using Garward and you are trying to be an infantry player, please, please, please just max this out as fast as possible. Get it to level five, four stars, get it over and done with because you will be the main tank lead obviously in behemoth raids and you're going to need this artifact to obviously torn the behemoth and keep control of its threat or its aggro away from your opponent so you just need this artifact right so i just thought to add this in and give it an honorable mention um, but that is it i'm not gonna lie i wouldn't recommend anything else you can choose some other stuff if you want maybe like a fang it's okay but i just think you can choose better options out there if i'm honest with you right so now with all of that mess out of the way let's now go into the talent section and explain how i basically use my goward with his talents and welcome to the talent section i've got two talent builds to go over and the first one i'm going to showcase is going to be basically the tanking build that i kind of believe i recommended last season which is honestly a really good build still and that's why i'm still going to recommend it but it's not the build i am currently running it's going to be a second build later on obviously going to be timestamped for you so this build has a little bit of a different change in it as you can see it's a little bit more hyper focused in certain stats that what i'm trying to avoid so in this tank tree we are going to be taking unyielding spirit to reduce hero skill damage taken and obviously hearts of iron to again reduce our normal attack damage taken when we blow 50 percent these are really nice payoffs for our march and just gives us the ability to tank as much damage as possible with this we obviously will be taking our overall health this is just a nice combo with steel sinews just insane amount of hp gain and you need hp to take damage if you're an infantry player so what you'll notice is the little bit down here and i will recommend this is honestly up to you and what i'm going to say is i've gone five out of five for overall speed because i'm not too fussed about the counter attack damage taken because what i've done instead on this side is go five out of five when i finish out obviously by uh, leveling up and he will have four percent hero skill damage taken reduction kind of synergizing with my unyielding spirit and because of that i can just be greedy and actually go for more march speed which is actually really good for getting in and out of combat certain times if you're able to kind of pull out and get those guys out without them getting killed kind of will be beneficial for you uh, but you can if you want to go and you've seen it in plenty of my videos three points into swift analysis and two points into overall speed is also fine and if you want to go four five points in swift analysis i won't hate it i just think march speed is very very good when you're playing this march but once we've kind of done all of this as you can see we're only going to be taking egoism five out of five we go for adrenaline rush five out of five and then we will take cool headed increasing our shell uh, defense through shelter gain which is really beautiful whenever we cast our rage skill which is a buff effect and then if we have one last point it's up to you where you really want to place it you could deal more damage you could technically come back down here and get an extra three percent which is beautiful for mark speed and leave it at that right and that is basically the tank page that i use the and use all the time and this is basically what i've been running for a while however as of last season i did some experimenting i've been doing some dual testing and stuff and i've changed my build a lot because i have a different way of playing my goud now and as you can see i've nicknamed it the buff build so the way this works is pretty simple we we are only trying to take advantage honestly of iron will this extends duration of buff effects gained through rage skills by one second when your legions are entirely composed of infantry units this is super powerful and i'm going to explain why right now because when we look at your skills we get a physical damage dealt bonus whenever we get healed. This is a buff effect which triggers actually through this rage effect. If this can happen, this can actually go through this. And I've seen this happen and it's beautiful, which will increase this 
to six seconds. This also is a buff effect, as as you can imagine, we cast our raid skill, getting our 1200 healing, but the buff effect of reducing all damage taken by 20% is now going to be five seconds over four. And you can imagine if you're an awakened Goward, this is kind of getting scary now, you get a seven second damage taken a reduction buff of 20%. That is scary. Seven seconds reducing all damage taken by 20%. Just obscene. And it goes even further because when we go into our talent tree, we get cool headed. And this is increasing our defense whenever we cast our rage skill by 4% for three seconds. Well, this is going now to four seconds because of this buff. Also, the Unyielding Spirit. This is a kind of powerful one where you can um, choose to take this if you really wanted to. and Or you could also take Impregnable Defense. But I honestly do go for the Hero Skill Damage Taken. I think it's just a beautiful combination with, as you can imagine, Cool Headed. But on top of all of this, which is really cool, I also like Generalist. And this is kind of, I think, one underappreciated skill people are not using enough i think it's the best skill in the infantry tree it's it's terrifyingly powerful because when you're in a battle you have a 10 percent chance to gain and this is all three stats it's not just one so you have a 10 percent chance to gain five percent extra attack defense and hp for one second it's just crazy so as you can see all I am doing in my build is specifically trying to take as least damage as possible through my actual buff effects and just general talent. So if you're looking at just general talents as um, an example to that, Egoism is going to be obviously 3.2% extra um, less damage. Obviously, we get the extra defense over here. And this goes straight up. You know, we're taking less normal attack damage. We've got Generalist, which is beautiful. Whenever we get hit by a normal attack, we generate Rage, which is really, really powerful for our march here. And then, obviously, we're going up into Iron Will. When we're on this side, you will see we've got Encouraging Dance too, And because of this, you can actually go up and take all Conquering and go and take five out of five. Or if you really greet it, I don't like this. Some people do, but you can go for 5% increased healing. This will just obviously make your heals a little bit better, meaning in trades or if you want to say in any sort of combat, you might give a little bit more troops to the enemy. That's why I prefer... All conquering being five out of five, and then I will go for unyielding spirit. It's just, it's just good, guys. It's just very powerful. Um, whenever you're getting hit, you have a chance of reducing hero skill damage taken, and you are gonna be blocking as much hero skill damage taken. So this is my current build. This is what I use all the time on my Galward. I'm not gonna lie. And um, you can look like we go on. I would have to switch to any of these guys on the top. So this is my current build. I run um, and I'm doing fantastic with it. Like I say, I've got uh, maybe some reports saved. If we have, there we go. With Anger Fist, this is one of our guys. You can see um, we've got another one. And um, if we go to the Legion buffs, this is what we were talking about. Like even with this like massive disadvantage, like we still win. Like, and that was with, like, the HP artifact on. And then if we go to, um, this one is 230. And then we had a second hit afterwards. So we won that one. And then we had this one. So if you look in this one, you'll see, again, it's with the dragon scale. And you just deal so much damage because of it. Um, if we go into this one, I think this might be the attack artifact there we go so you can see like the benefits of doing this right like this is insane like the the differences in it and we, we were testing the changes you know on these artifacts and this guy if you're wondering like he is if he's still in his location we'll soon see um but he was um around 64 63 million power right so we're fighting with some big big guys you know some big guys here he is so that's my Goward guide. That's what I run. I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, before we make this video too long, I've gone over all of the skills, all of the artifacts, all of the pets, all of the pairings, and my two talent builds that I would recommend, the nice and easy one, or the build that I am currently running and I'm honestly loving at the moment, which is outperforming so many players. So if you've enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Smash the like, comment, and subscribe. And until later on, stay safe, stay sneaky. Peace out.